Hi, my name is Kevin Kazmer. I'm an architect in Illinois. I run a company called Kioxin Inc. Uh, it's a little bit pro progressive. I, I uh, focus on more of uh, the future of architecture, the future of design, than within traditional elements, uh, as opposed to kind of looking back at the past. I went to the University of Illinois at Chicago. I graduated with a, you know, an architectural degree and got my license in that shortly thereafter. So I've been only doing architecture for many years. I'll keep my age silent. Who did you work for at first? Did you go to work for a firm, big firm, I, small firm? I always wanted to work with small firms because you could always, you had more responsibility. You could be more hands-on. So a lot of my friends out of college worked for the larger firms, SOM, and they didn't really do much other than be a part of a team, you know, they were the eighth person on the relay team and didn't get to design anything. So I would stay with small firms and the small local firm I worked with, probably the longest right out of college, was a firm called New Horizons. And we did mostly residential projects. You know, we did small, light commercial and we did a lot of residences. So as soon as the residential market would slow down a little bit, we would focus more on the Trammell Crow office warehouse buildings, but as soon as residential picked up again, we were designing a lot of custom homes. It was always fun. Like that all the time. It does work like that. That's how our industry works. Yeah. In and out, in and out, and go, where, go where the buildings go. Right. So, what's different about the way you approach architecture than a traditional architect, would you say? Uh, I think uh, probably the biggest difference between me and other architects is I always tell everybody when I start, hey, I'm not going to live there. This isn't my house. Um, I'm often will give my input as to what I would what I would do, but the thing is, I'm always asking them. I'm, you know, I want to learn about them because really, I kind of look at myself as the assembler of a puzzle. You know, I've got the pieces. I kind of know where to get. I'm a resourceful guy, but I need to hear what you've been, uh, what you want out of this. And you know, sometimes people, the big thing they say is, "Geez, we would just love to have a nice home, but we don't have a lot of money." You know, we want to keep this as tight as possible. Well, that's that's a good starting point too, because I know how to design efficiently as well. There are other people that's like, well, this is our fifth home. You know, I want to have an elevator. I want to have heated floors. So they're into the comfort levels of things. So I've designed all kinds. I've really, uh, and I have all kinds of weird clients, um, eccentric clients. Not weird. That's maybe uh, not a word, good word to say, but eccentric. And so they've seen a lot, they've done a lot, and so they, you know, when it comes to their home, it's really kind of their own personal sanctuary. And so they want some really, you know, nifty, cool things. And so I have people that um, sometimes refurbish antiques, and they want me to incorporate these antique pieces into their home and into the staircase, or, uh, you know, we'll walk up a, you know, up a few flights of stairs to a large landing, and then we'll put in a built-in piece that might have an old mirror from 1900 or something, and then we'll go from there. But so I, I get those kind of clients that uh, like to do some fun stuff. Is that how? And so, how did you get familiar with Gabarette? Uh, I knew about Gabarette before I started specking it, and it was I just liked it because it was very contemporary looking. You know, it wasn't the tr traditional uh, toilet that you know we all grew up with in America. Um, and I liked it, you know, my big thing with it was uh, I was always afraid of the weight, you know, it, always, it looked great, but you know, when you think about how people use toilets as uh, stepping stools to hang a photograph or, or paint or put up some border trim or whatever, I was always, when I saw it, I thought, that looked nice for a while. You know, and so, uh, so that's why, uh, you know, I didn't really see a lot of them. I saw it and I didn't really think it had much um, survival in the residential marketplace. I thought it's just really going to be something we're going to see in the schools, not that model, but, you know, uh, the wall mounted uh, flush valve uh, toilets that we see in, in all the commercial uh, buildings. And I thought that it really didn't have much of a life in a residential home. So it surprised you? It surprised me that, uh, that it did as well because it just fits inside of a two by four frame wall, you know? And so t to me, you know, the commercial ones are anchored down into some steel behind the wall, they're bolted down. Uh, and again, I'm sure they're designed for like the 700 pound weight that's gonna be put on it when they're putting drywall in place or whatever. But my, I guess my point with it is I just thought it would fizzle out of the residential market and it didn't. It seemed like more people were introducing a product similar to it, clean, Lines. Do you know what the weight holds? I don't. 880. 880. 880 pounds. Well, that's good to know. I'm going to tell my clients that next time when they're concerned about the weight.
Thankfully, uh, it's, it's what, that's one of the things. What else? So, how did you get to install one? So, um, I, I had some. I was designing a home for two engineers, and uh, and they were really about everything. The latest, the latest, got to be the latest, the latest. So. We put a geothermal field in, and you know we we provide for their heating and cooling to work, you know, with the ground. We had solar panels in it. So when we were getting and talking about all this latest, they wanted the outside of the house to look very traditional, but inside the house they wanted it to be very contemporary, very clean line. Now at the time I started designing the home for them, they had two boys, and they were messy, and they weren't a good aim. And so the the um, the wife of the the engineer who was the wife. I uh, kept saying how, you know, it's a lot easier to clean up if I had a clean open floor area. And, uh, and so again, that was when we were talking about how m little time she had to clean up after her two messy boys. I said, you should really look at this product because you won't have anything on the floor. You can always mop up, you can always clean up. Plus we wanted to have a heat mat in there so the floors were warm and everything else. So this was, an, again, an opportunity at the time to be able to have, you know, have a, a warm tile floor that was consistent, wasn't broken up, and then to have um, uh, a nice area that we can easily clean up. And so that is usually the, the that my clients are not always the engineers who want it, but the people that are always looking at it are people who are looking for very clean lines, very streamlined, very um, minimum. They're not minimalist, but they like they're very they they just like a nice clean look. So, so did you put it into this client's home? Yeah, we put it everywhere. We put it in every bathroom. Really? How many? Yeah. So there were three. I brought the drawings with me. Uh, I'm saying three, but there may be a basement one too. I don't know if we put one in the basement. Do you have, do you have photos also? I don't have photos of their, of their home. Uh, the, one thing about engineers is they're very private people. You know, so they're, they're not, they're not, you know, if they were, if they were flamboyant, they'd be architects, you know, so. <laughs> So they're very private, quiet people. So I don't actually have any photo. They never let me enter it in any kind of design awards. So uh, besides the cleanliness and the clean lines of that, what else did anything else attract them to that? Or well, wall finishes. So they could have this continuation of the wall finish that was behind the, um, you know, the vanity. It could go right across the wall. Could run right into the to the um, shower or the tub area. So they like that idea too. So they got their wish of uh, traditional on the outside and everything new on the inside. Right. So where do you get your inspiration? Um, really, uh, what do you mean? Per you know, personally, to be an architect, uh, the guy who actually started ALA, his name was Don Erickson. That's actually one of my favorite architects growing up. Uh, he's a Swede, but he um, he did some very interesting buildings where he took structure and made structure architecture. So he's got a lot of popular buildings you probably don't know about. Um, but when you saw stuff that was suspended and you're like you didn't know how it worked like staircases that were suspended on cables or suspended on so he was one of these young architects back in the time he actually learned under frank lloyd wright as a young kid and then but when i met him i did get a chance to meet him but when i started to see the stuff he was an older guy very well experienced and so he was my inspiration to be an architect because he did homes that i didn't grow up in i grew up in your traditional four bedroom two and a half bath colonial with a two-car garage and uh, I went to my friend's house one time I met in high school and he lived on this lake and his house cantilevered over the lake and there were all these weird things about it and nothing was normal. And I was like, how did you get this house? And he said his father was a builder and he works with this architect named Don Erickson. I'm like, man, I just have to know about this guy. Well, I was in high school at the time so I just started to study him. And then that's when I said, I'm going to be an architect. So where do you go for your inspiration now, since he's not here? Uh, you know what, I do this, the builder shows a lot. I go, and I'm always looking for what's the, what's the latest thing. I, don't tell me what I already know. Tell me something I don't know. So even when I go to a booth, I say to people, so tell me something I don't know. Tell me something I'm not going to learn about from just reading a periodical. And so, um, uh, and th so my inspiration is by going and meeting, hearing things from other people. Do, do you read magazines at all? I do. Which I do. Ones? Um, well, I'm probably on every list, but uh, I probably stayed mostly with the, the regular journals of the Architectural Digest, you know, the, the, the normal ones. You know, when there's a lot of trade show magazines that they want you on their list, but I probably don't really get too much to, into their magazines that much. Do you have a favorite? Uh, that's a good question. Kitchen and Bath, uh, they have their own magazine. I'm still on their list, so. There's actually like three, do you know which one you did? 
<laughs> no, I, I, I would know if I went back to my office. I don't want to say the wrong one. It would, oh, you know, it's, it's like what people say, it right, when it's, a, it's the wrong <laughs> name. No. You know. <laughs> there is no right name because this is about Gabra. They don't care. Okay. I mean, they care. They care because I'm sure they want to know where else should they be advertising to right. reach one of people questions. like me. Do you use social media? I do. I Tell do. Tell me about that. So, uh, 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 the big, not necessarily for myself, I don't self promote. It's always with my clients when they want to promote their stuff. I always respect their privacy and everything else. So, uh, again, I have clients, um, I told you they're eccentric. Uh, and so I, I have celebrity clients. and. Uh, and they will, they'll like me to leak something because they don't want to make it sound like they're bragging, but sometimes they are very excited about something that we've done to their house. And so those are the types of things that I'll then put on the social media. Mm -hmm. which, which platforms do you use? Um, I don't use Pinterest, you know, uh, but my, a lot of my clients bring stuff to me on Pinterest. Um, I just usually just release it through um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, is probably my, you know, the thing that I release it through the most. Mm -hmm. When they tell you to leak something, is it usually over Facebook or? Yeah, because they'll, they'll they'll get it. Yes. So yeah. you're a leaker. No, I'm a leaker. I don't put it on YouTube. I've done interviews on YouTube sure. where I've walked with the homeowners, oh. and the the size of the file so large, it's easy to put it on YouTube so that then everybody else can see it. Yeah. But Facebook made it easier to upload you stuff. Twitter at all? I don't. I do have clients that tweet. But there's, I can't talk in 140 words or less, characters or less. Um, do you network with other architects or designers? How do you, uh, your peers, how do you do that? Uh, you, um, I don't. I don't, I, I, I only do it when other architects, other architects call me and ask me to help them on a project. But I don't, I don't actively seek to joint venture or anything. Do you do CUs, you have to to maintain your accreditation? Or? I do, yeah. oh yeah. How do you do those? Um, uh, not online. No, I usually go to events. Again, uh, the problem with online uh, learning units is that there's very little interaction. Uh, and I'm a person, again, who kind of likes to tell me something I don't know. So I go to the events because they usually have a presentation on something, and then I'll ask questions like, you know, I'll tailor to things that I'm looking for out of it. Where did the events help? A lot of, you know, I usually go, to, I, no, they're all over the place, but uh, ALA um, runs events. AIA always has a convention every year. Mm -hmm. um, there's a group coming to my office tomorrow, uh, Solar Tube, which again, they, I spec their product on one of uh, the other projects, and they got my name and they asked if, you know, hey, can we present to your group at the office? And I'm, I'm fine with that, because uh, I want other people to learn about it. and. Uh, you know, I know that's not what the product we're talking about, but that particular product is the ability to bring natural light inside the center of a building. Well, we're always dealing with exterior glass, and I deal sometimes with some large footprint buildings, and I want to bring in some natural light, especially into an internal staircase or something like that. So the, this is now going from being a residential thing to, again, to being some like commercial. So, How big is your staff? Um, I only actually have one full-time person that works for me every day. I have two consultants that work for me from home. And then and they'll be in there for the CEU tomorrow? Well, so I share office space with a structural engineer oh, of a building okay. that I designed. I just, he and I, he built it. I designed it. Uh, we've known each other for many years. Oh. And so I share office space with them. Sure. So I have a structural, and again, I have a, a structure means a lot to me when I'm designing. And it's nice to have a colleague in the office that especially when I'm pushing the envelope on something, uh, to know that, fall. well, yeah, it's like, or will, police, will people believe it won't fall? Is more of the, more of the thing. It's kind of like with Gavarette, will people believe it won't that's fall? That's right, right. right. No, you're right, and that's, that's, you know, that's a concern. The concern is that maybe that they've, they've uh, grown up around American products that maybe haven't performed well, right? We'll use the toilet seat as the example, right? Your, your toilet seat is the weakest part of a toilet. So if you're standing on it and you're hanging something and the toilet seat shifts on it, you're falling, right? Well, it's not the toilet's fault, it's the toilet seat. But again, it's kind of this thing of, you know, like, you know, boy, it's a cheap toilet. Oh, it's a cheap toilet seat. Or it wasn't put on well. Or yeah, it's the nylon little clips on the bottom of it were loose, you know, that held your toilet seat in place. But um, uh, I think that because that's happened to people, they, 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 they have a tendency not to trust it. They you see it, they don't. Do you have objections with your clients on this fact that it's behind the wall or? I have to have both 
uh, I'm usually dealing with a husband and wife. I have to have both people on board. And so I usually have one person who really likes the idea, but before, before it ends up in the, in the house, the other spouse has to agree to it. Do you have to navigate their emotions? Or? Um, yeah. yeah. How do you do that? Uh, Carefully. <laughs> The thing is that, yeah, usually one of the spouses is always concerned about cost and maintenance, right? Like he's been around a tank toilet for all his life. He knows how to fix it. You know, so there's a problem, he knows how to fix it. Well, wow. now all of a sudden when you put water in the wall, it's like, oh my God, you're gonna put water in the wall? And then what if it leaks? And then it's gonna be leak and it's gonna ruin my ceiling down. So again, I, you know, I have to get through those parts of it because, um, and I, you saw me say he, because uh, it's usually he who has to fix it, and uh, you know, so he he is concerned. You know, the wife likes. Look, I like how this is. This is the way I want it to be, and he goes along with it as long as he figures out that he can fix it. Do if you show a problem. him how to fix it, or do you I show him how simple it is. Okay. And, you know, and that, it, it's really one of those things that they the the seeing is believing. So even when we're doing an install. Uh, and it's going into the wall. They're looking at it. And again, once they see that it's really not like a tank, like, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, like your porcelain tank, right? If you drop something, you crack it, right? And it would leak. You put, you put your, your water tank in the wall, it's not gonna leak. I don't think that's gonna leak when you're looking at it. You know, you think it's, it's you know, if it, if it leaked, they wouldn't be in business. Well, it's also guaranteed not to. I know, but my point right. is I that know. there's the there's this sense of if there's a problem, it's going to be my problem. So that's why I have to often really work more on the husband that it's really not going to be a maintenance I've issue. I've often described it as akin to Lego, where it's it's all plastic parts and you just reach into the plate and, and one done. of the engineers showed me how to do that once and they go, it's like Lego. Right. It's it is simple. Yeah. It's it's not as complicated. Deceptively simple. Sometimes. Right. So, as, as you, have you used it in many projects, or? Uh... I've, uh, I've successfully, the project I brought today, I yes. successfully put it everywhere uh, because I had both parties on board. Um, the, uh, my, my other celebrity type clients, um, they, they like it, uh, it's more display, you know, uh, but it's in there, it's in there, and, uh, uh, and they, they have it they have it in there because they wanted to um, to look like they have the latest. Mm -hmm. And also as part of, they'll also usually have an interior designer who will be designing all the tile work and everything else. So it's very nice and clean. It, it, it just it looks like a piece of art as opposed to a, a toilet, you know. Do you work uh, closely with interior designers then? Or? I do, if they're good. Um, if somebody hires somebody who's not good, I'm gonna tell them as well. You know, I'll just tell them that they, don't pick the low bidder. So before we unfold those drawings, tell me a little bit about those drawings. Uh, what's in them? Well, it's a very efficient them? home. It's, it's a very efficient home. So as I told you when I first met them, they had two boys. Yes. And so we originally designed the home one way. And then in the design process, she discovered she was going to have a baby. <laughs> so we had to redesign the home then. Uh, and uh, instead of them just having two kids, now they were going to have a, um, another child. So later we found out it was going to be a girl. So we changed kind of some of the framework around. But but again, they just wanted to have enough bedroom space uh, with uh, with the amount of kids. They thought they were kind of done with two kids. Now they realize they're going to have three. Timing is everything. Timing is everything with that. But you know what? It, I all of a sudden it turned into we had a change in scope. So we had an addendum to the original contract because now we're designing for an extra bedroom and you know, eliminating a playroom and all kinds of stuff, but. Any issues when it went in or? No, no, no there weren't any issues. And, and the, the project's been in place now for, let's see, it's 2010. So the project's been in place for six, seven years and there's been no issues with it. Right. What bowls did they use, Durbin? I don't know, I don't, okay. I, okay. that's, you're testing that memory on that one. Come on, no, I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> um, so what's the best project you ever worked on in your mind? It sounds like you've got a vast I, I have one client is so eccentric. I have bookcases that are doors. I have a I have a completely hidden staircase behind a bookcase that rolls. And he really challenged my ability to be able to create it because it's not like you can just write the drawings. Uh, moving bookcase into wall and then the carpenter knows how to build it. Uh, but fortunately at that time I was doing his house. Um, my kids were into skateboarding. 
and they had just come out with these great skateboard wheels that are real quiet and they can go real fast and so I designed his bookcase on a skateboard and I um, he's very into James uh, Hardy Boy Mysteries and old movies so I have the Maltese Falcon in, on his bookcase that pushes down and is pushing down to a garage door opener and the garage door opener rather than being mounted on a track to pull your door up is mounted sideways to pull the bookcase in and so uh, he's probably my best client he, he's a huge Halloween guy parties and stuff and so he completely decorates the house like count like a Dracula's mansion and stuff and it's and we built the house in in 2001 uh, but he wanted to look like it was built in 1900 so the outside of the house is all um, is he local? He is local. He's in Kildare and uh, he but it looks like a Queen Anne, a painted lady, a Victorian painted lady home. But it, it's still very contemporary, you know. It, it, the portico share, I mean, I did all these old time features, but you know, he's still, he, uh, he's a, a, quite a hobbyist for restoration. So he's always restoring something. And he's the guy that I put in. He, he found the, uh, for sale, he found the, uh, the mirror that was in the Lexington Hotel that Al Capone owned, and so that he wanted that in his staircase. He was one of the guys that uh, that really challenged me on how to. Centric is the right word. Yeah, and, and he, his his thing all the time was, I know what you're going to tell me. Anything's possible. Just write the check, Mark. And I'm like, that's right. Anything's possible. Just write the check. Uh, so, but he's probably my most fun because he. Uh, uh, he just, he's such a kid at heart. Mm -hmm. So he's a kid with an endless bank account. What did he do for a living? Originally he was a software engineer and then he always wanted to be a lawyer so then he, he made a bunch of money in software. So then he put himself through law school and then, uh, but he really, his wife is, uh, his wife is a physician so he really didn't have to work much after, after he, put, after he built that house he just started, I think I just energized him to do more toy things so I, we're, we're, we're really kind of two pieces he's a perfect client for me because he really allows he will let me expand my, uh, my you know my outer limits on design who's the worst one you ever worked with? I worked for a very famous person who was a very difficult person and uh, so our relationship lasted, lasted three months so uh, um, she's very well known and uh, she and I just butt heads a lot I did two projects for her and she was very, you know, she was, you know, so I can't say hard to work with, just uh, the demands or? Uh, just the fact of her lack of knowledge. And so when you're trying to explain something to somebody who doesn't really understand everything. Our, our worst client is the one who knows everything and you can't teach him anything. <laughs> That's our worst type of client. Right. This is great.